Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today it's time to reassemble this Barra green top. While this engine's apart, I thought it would be a good opportunity to have a go at gapping the piston rings. Increasing the piston ring gap will allow me to run slightly more boost. I'm increasing the top ring from 19 thou to 24 thou, and the bottom ring from 21 thou to 26 thou. Ford actually recommend measuring the ring gap from the bottom of the bore, so I'm using an old piston to push the ring down to keep it straight. This is also a good way to test for a tapered ball, although I only had a problem with cylinder 5, so I had to increase the ring gap by one more thou. The second ring has a tiny dot on it to indicate that it is the second ring, and it also needs to be facing up. The connecting rod bolts on these engines are a single use torque to yield bolt, so they do need to be replaced after removing the rods. It is a very lengthy process gapping piston rings. You can see how many times I'm measuring and trimming and measuring and trimming. You don't want to accidentally trim off too much, so you only want to trim a little bit each time. You can end up with a little lip on the ring from the grinding wheel. I didn't get it on camera, but you can just fix that by running a file along the edge of the piston ring. Now you probably just watched that and noticed while I was talking up the rod caps that I didn't have any bolts in the main caps. And you're probably sitting there thinking, that's not the right way to do it. And you're absolutely right. You want bolts in your main caps to stop the crank from uh, coming out of place or uh, wiggling around. Bearings can move, things can move, and it's, it's not a good time. However, on this engine, those caps are on there pretty damn good. Um, also, the oil pump is still securing the crank in there, so uh, I'm not too worried about it moving. I think it's going to be fine. All these scars are not my brain. 
So now that the uh, rings and bearings are done, let's get the deck cleaned up and get the head back on. Getting ready to put the uh, head on and just cracked open the head gasket. I didn't actually realise I ordered an MLS gasket, so um, I did. I actually thought that was just a, a perma seal gaskets were a single one, like the factory Ford ones. But no, that's actually an MLS gasket. They also send you their own instructions. I'm going to follow that, and hopefully, I don't have any problems. So it's time to put the uh, lifters and the rockers back into this engine. Um, you'll see that when I'm stripping an engine, I'll actually lay things out the way they were in the engine so that when it comes time to reassemble, everything is in the same spot or where it should go back into this engine. So everything on the right side is intake, everything on the left is exhaust. Uh, and from front to back, everything is in order. That way I don't accidentally put something in the wrong spot just in case they are different. If you have a look on the cans here, you'll see like uh, grooves from having machine, uh, like metal on metal contact. Um, and it's just good practice to put them back in the same spot instead of creating new grooves. It won't make or break your engine build, but it's just good practice to put things back where they came from. All right, cam caps are all done. Uh, engine is at uh, top dead center. Uh, everything's aligned, ready to put the chain back on. I have done another video where I talk about how to um, set up your timing chain, which I'll leave a um, link to in the description. Uh, you'll see uh, the oil pump here and the and the bit of the block there looks um, it's gone really brown. Um, I think that's just a um, reaction with the degreaser. It that's like it doesn't feel like there's no dirt or anything in there. It's, it's just a weird reaction. I've never seen that before, but <clears throat> doesn't matter. Uh, let's keep going. So just getting ready to put the sump back on the engine uh, as well as the timing cover. Now because this is a BF engine, this does not use a rubber seal in the sump or the timing cover other than these half moon seals for the front and the back. Uh, you can see that they're cut a little bit differently so there's, there's one for each. Because it doesn't use a rubber seal, you have to use RTV. Now in the Ford manual it says to run the bead along the flat and not on the corner on the, on the lip, on the ledge. Um, Unfortunately, that's actually how I did it in my turbo engine. I ran the bead on the inside and that does leak, uh, which makes sense. If it's on the ledge, when you put it on the engine, it should spooge into that ledge and create a, a better seal. So 
I'm going to do it that way now and hopefully I won't have any problems. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this video. The engine is all done and I reckon it's come up fantastic. She's cleaned up really good and it was the first time that I've ever gapped piston rings before. But you know, you're not going to learn unless you jump in and give it a crack. So make sure you hang around because I will be putting a turbo on this engine in my next video. I do appreciate everyone who's been uh, subscribing and commenting, sharing my stuff. Uh, it's awesome to see and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.